Ants are amazing creatures. They play an important role in our ecosystem, but when they're in your school, they're a pest. Most of the ants found in California schools are Argentine ants. The worker ants invade buildings and feed a much larger colony, including their queen. The nests are usually out here, underground, in wood chips or mulch, under pavement, tiles, trees, in places with moisture and protection. Ants come inside searching for easy meals, sugar such as spilled soda or that piece of candy under the locker, and starches like french fries. In the spring, the queen ant is producing more ants, so she needs protein like lunch meat or other insects. In the winter, ants may come in here just to get out of the rain, and in summer they may come in to escape the hot and dry conditions outside. Since ants are everywhere, they could infest your school just about anywhere. Classrooms, kitchens, teacher's lounge, and especially the cafeteria. The best thing to do is to make your building as uninviting to ants as possible. Remove what the ants need, food, water, and shelter, and keep the ants out by making it difficult for them to enter. Caulk and seal all cracks and holes, especially around pipes, electrical outlets, and windows. You can use weather stripping around doors and windows. Keep dumpsters and recyclables away from building entrances. Some plants, like roses and fruit trees, attract ants. Don't plant those near buildings. And cut back trees and bushes so they don't provide ant bridges to the building. In the kitchen, get rid of anything that could be food or water to ants. Clean shelves, wash dirty dishes, and rinse cans and bottles before disposal. Store food off the floor and in sealed containers. Keep the floor clean. Empty trash and recyclable bins at the end of each day. Change trash liners regularly. And keep everything dry. Fix water leaks if anything's dripping. When people eat in the classroom, designate eating areas. Remove food at the end of the day or keep anything food-like in sealed containers. Wipe the desks and clean the floor regularly. And clean up after crafts. If you see ants inside, follow them to find their food source and their point of entry. Worker ants scout out food. When they find it, they head back to the colony, leaving a scent trail so the other ants can find the food. Before you know it, you have a big problem. So remove the food, seal the entry point, and clean the area with soapy water so the ants don't come back in. What happens if after doing all that, the ants still keep on coming? Well, let's ask the UCIPM advisor for help. Andrew, we've sealed all the cracks, we've cleaned up all the crumbs, and yet we still have ants. What do we do? Well, if you've carried out all of these preventative tactics, chemical management may be necessary. Now, insecticide baits and self-contained bait stations are actually the most effective at long-term management of ant colonies. As a matter of fact, you could take out an entire ant colony with such a system rather than just targeting the ants that you can see. Wow, these can take out an entire colony? What are the health risks to people, and most importantly, our students? Uh, well, you know, bait stations represent lower risk or reduced risk, and that's because the active ingredient, the insecticide, is contained within a station. And so actually the only likely way for this material to leave is within the body of the ant. Now, how, how do self-contained baits actually work? Well, they're attractive to the ants, so the baits themselves contain a mixture of a food attractant and a slow-acting insecticide. So these are attractive to foraging ants. They pick up the bait, whether it's a liquid or a gel, and they carry this material back to the colony and share it amongst themselves. So in this manner, you could really take out the entire colony, including the queens. Okay, now I've seen a lot of these um, self-contained bait stations. Does, does it matter which one we use? Absolutely. So uh, some ant species are going to prefer sweets, you know, sugar-based baits, and other ant species uh, may prefer uh, protein-based. And as a matter of fact, some species will switch depending on if they're raising a brood. They may switch from sugar to protein. So y some of our baits actually offer both kinds in the same bait station. Um, and that way you can kind of test them out to see which one is more attractive for your situation and your species. Now see, I, I like these little prepackaged baits. Um, they're easy. Can I just set them anywhere? 
No, not really. The baits are most effective outside, and that's because you don't want to attract the ants inside if you can help it. And then in the case that we do want to use a bait station inside, let's say we don't know uh, where the ants are getting in to the building, then we can use uh, bait stations inside. And of course, we want to make sure that they are inaccessible so they can't be tampered with. Um, actually, there are a number of housing systems uh, that are lock and key that will ensure that your baits are going to be tamper proof. And then it's also important to remember that inside we have the option to use gel baits. And gel baits, of course, uh, desiccate quite readily and you don't want to use them outside. So gel baits are best for indoor use. All right, so we've set down our stations. What next? Well, now comes the hard part. We need to bait and wait. I'm with you. You know, it can take seven to 10 days to see any results, and it could take up to several weeks before the problem is totally under control. Weeks? I don't think the teachers are gonna be happy about that. What should we do in the meantime while we're waiting? Well, you wanna make sure that your bait stations are attractive. So that means you're going to eliminate all food and water that the ants may be accessing. And then also, if you see ants, you can vacuum them or wipe them up. Now, why don't we just spray around the entire building? Well, keep in mind, that's only going to kill the ants that come into contact with that application, with that spray. So you're not going to affect the rest of the colony, which may be underground or, or nearby. Uh, and also, applications like that contribute to our urban surface water contamination with pesticides when those materials run off of impervious surfaces following rainfall or, say, uh, washing down the driveway. The ants will come back, I guarantee it. Makes a lot of sense. Thanks a lot, Andrew. You're welcome. All right, bait and wait. And twiddle your thumbs in the meantime? No, there's record keeping to be done. Where and when were ants spotted? How many? How did you manage them? And what was the result? Write it all down so that you know what works for next time. Ants are everywhere. In fact, they're a normal part of our world. And when they don't bother anyone, they're not a pest. Help them stay that way by cleaning up anything that could be food for them inside or close to the building. And if you have to use pesticides, use bait stations. Bait and go watch an anthill. Take in a sunset. Maybe update your pest monitoring notes. Hey, did I ever tell you about cockroaches? Well, stay tuned. You're going to love it.